friends, Leslie from A Friend to Knit With. Welcome to episode 21 of Friend to Knit With podcast. I can be found on Instagram as Leslie Friend. I am Friend to Friend on Ravelry and my blog name is A Friend to Knit With. Today is December 20th. Oh my gosh, five days till Christmas and it is a glorious day here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We actually have blue skies, which we haven't seen I seriously don't think all month. So this is dreamy. I did spend the first 10 days of December in quarantine. I did test for positive on the first of the month to test positive for COVID on the first of the month. My son was home for Thanksgiving and went back and tested positive. And then a couple days later, I tested positive and then my husband tested positive. So I really only had to spend two days like in my bedroom waiting for food. <laughs> and then after my husband tested positive, we could kind of use the whole house. So it really wasn't as awful as some people having to stay in like one room because um, we had access to the house and then I could like make my own food and everything. But I will talk a little bit about COVID. I have some things I wanna share about that at the end of the podcast, but if anyone's interested. But right now I'm going to talk about what's off my needles. I did not finish this while I was in quarantine, but I did knit a lot. This was finished probably at the end of the month. It is the Daily Pullover by Paula Pereira. And I cannot say enough about the combination of the yarn with the sweater, with the pattern. It's just one of those sweaters that, yes, I... I, it's so versatile. I will wear it so often. I, it definitely will be one of my most worn sweaters. It's just, a, I think you can dress it up. You can wear it with jeans. I will show it to you. I did dress it up today because you know, it's almost Christmas. So um, I did put it on with a little skirt, but uh, it's just so easy. Sorry, I'm a little taller, I guess, than when it is, where the screen is. But um, I didn't make any modifications except for the length because it's a little more cropped. So I added, I think, two inches. I do have everything over on um, my Ravelry page if anyone's interested. But I just mm, love everything about it. I honestly think that this weight of this yarn and the linen quill, which is so dreamy, is... It could actually be a all year sweater. It's definitely three seasons. If you have a cooler summers, it's, you know, it could be worn in the summer also, especially like in the mountains or wherever you live. But uh, I bought this yarn because I was gonna make another half and half triangles wrap. I was gonna use the nutmeg and the black kettle. And I still think, wouldn't that be dreamy? But I love my half and half triangles wrap. I am so happy I had the experience with it. And I have worn it, but I know I'll just wear sweaters more. I just do. So I want to put, you know, my yarn to use of something I'll wear. So I'm going to make another one out of the nutmeg. I have it. I have my needles all still ready to go. I had another phone call. I really have to figure out if there's a way to block that because it seems like every time I podcast, I get a phone call. So, um, so here is the picture. You can't see the body, but it is cropped. Um, if you like more of a cropped version and her V is a little deeper. So I just wanted to mention if you want to make a less deep V, then you just bind off a little tighter. I did this in my one lovely sweater and I tell people because it can be a deep V like this. So if that's a deterrent for this, or if you want it deeper even, just bind off looser. So it really will either, you know, let this fall out or tighten it up. So that is something you, if you want to, you know, think about that you didn't like or you want it deeper, or whatever, but I like a less deep V, um, just for probably warmth. And yeah, just because I do. But you can 
sort of play around with the bind off on that to make that to your liking. I don't think I did anything else with the length of the sleeves or anything. I adore this yarn though, and the little white flex. I love that it's not just a, you know, solid black. You can just see all of the linen. It's not itchy. I had a lot of people ask me that. I am sensitive to wools, especially rustic wools, right on my skin. For some reason, the linen quill, not at all. I do. I did hear some people like their half and half triangles wrap would bother their neck too. So I don't have anything on under this except, you know, my bra, but I think you could probably wear layer it with a t-shirt or something if you really wanted to make it and you were sensitive to wools. So yeah, super excited about this sweater because it is definitely a daily sweater. So, all right, uh, this back here is my other off the needles during quarantine. Uh, it is not exactly finished. So that's why I, you know, I'm not even gonna probably try it on for you because here's what I have to do. And I don't know, I'm dragging my heels, but you have to, I'll show you over here. Maybe you can, you have to go up through a stitch the stitch below and grab the loop and pull it through below. And then that makes all those loops sort of lay down, which I know I'm gonna like better. I just haven't taken the time to do that. So there are a lot of loops on here. So that just, I, it just became a little overwhelming for me, but I think I, um, we'll love it. My friend Denise is making one in off-white and come on, Denise, get going. So as soon as she finishes and I finish my loops, uh, we, I will have her on the podcast and we can show you those because I love it. What I love most though, is the community that Amy Small creates with her knit alongs. It's a knit collage knit along. This was part of that. There were, I think five sweaters to choose from. This is the loop it up and she just, her energy is really great. She creates this amazing community with her Zoom calls. She has you, you know, meet other knitters within the Zoom call. She offers yoga classes and I didn't do any yoga classes this year, but I just, I loved everything about it. She really builds a community. She has a spring one and a fall one. I've never done the spring ones, but the fall ones um, I did last year and this year. So we'll see if I do next year. Um, I have to, I guess, love the love of pattern that she comes up with, but I really, really love this on the model. And it's not a daily sweater, but I think it would be, you know, sort of worn in lieu of a jean jacket in, you know, the fall or something more like a coat. That's probably how I will wear it. But yeah, I think I'm gonna love it. And I absolutely love the color. It's ink and it has this little gold thread that ran through it, which really secured the yarn. I thought I had a problem with my last knit along, like the roving just sort of split some and I'm um, kind of pulled it. I'm a little bit of a tighter knitter. Um, so this did not at all just really held it nicely together. So I love that. And isn't that color? Mm, I love it. So anyhow, that came off the needles. And then Libby, I think I told you during the last podcast, I know I did, that she asked for a red Christmas sweater. So I ended up finishing that also. This is the Hotline Sweater by Wool and the Gang. And this is my third hotline sweater. So I knew this would be a very quick knit. I have one and I made her another one. And then uh, she loved, She actually loves this style so much. So I knew she would like this. So it's just a front and a back, two sleeves, and just this sort of slouchy turtleneck effect. And I'm gonna have her on in a little bit and she can tell you all about it. She agreed to come on and meet you guys. I'm so excited. So I guess those are my three 
bigger knits off the needles. And then I just started working on Christmas gifts. I am never that organized and don't really have that much inspiration until like the two weeks before Christmas. And then I start to like think of everything I want to make all my people. <laughs> so um, it wasn't a lot. I, I haven't made a lot. Of course, I made toast and toast is always something I make. I have another couple pairs that I made that I've already sent out. But you've seen me talk about these before and I cannot love these more. I am going to give you the pattern for free. Um, so let's toast and maybe you'll still have some time to make someone. Use let's toast over on Ravelry at checkout. And it uses one skein of, I don't know how many yards, 130 I think, of a worsted weight yarn. I'm sure you have something in your stash, size seven needles, so they go very quickly. And they truly add so much warmth to everything. Yesterday I had a coat on that just kind of had big sleeves and we were outside walking downtown and I was so happy to have the toast because otherwise the wind would have been gushing up my sleeves. So these are a little tighter than most because I made these in Florida on size six needles, but so size seven, so you can do a size six if you like them tight like this, or if you have a really small framed person you're making them for. But um, I usually make them on size seven. And my favorite yarn for these, you guys, is uh, Woolies for, that you can get at Joanne Fabrics or Michaels, but it's uh, Lion Brand Woolies. And I love it because, first of all, the array of colors is great. And secondly, when you give them as gifts, they can wash and dry them and you don't have to worry about them, you know, ruining them. You don't have to give them something, some fussy washing instructions. So I absolutely love that about that yarn. I'm using that yarn in some other Christmas gifts. I, you know, this was one of those things I didn't think about till you know, the, the the very beginning of the month. But this is the Savant Double Brim hat, which I think is the greatest hat ever. I uh, love, so it's double brim, so it's really warm. And you literally are knitting the entire time. You uh, fold it under and knit the one stitch with the cast on edge and then you just continue knitting and then run the yarn through at the end. Easy peasy, you could have these made in no time. I bought my pom-poms from um, Barrett Wool Company, Susan B. Anderson's Wool Company, and they are detachable pom-poms with, you know, a little snap. And I thought it would be a really great gift to give them um, a couple choices. So give them a couple pom-poms and then they can change the look of their hats. Okay, we'll see what this one looks like. Uh, but she is, they're out of stock right now. Cute, right? So her, this pa color palette of, you know, the more natural, like earthy tones, I guess. She has some bright pinks and reds and other things available right now, but this palette is gone, which really bummed me out because I, this all came together and I wanted to give people choices. So I have, I've been doing a little research and I found some on Etsy. I don't know if I'll have them in time for Christmas because I haven't even ordered them yet. But, um, so this year they might just get one pom pom, but I think it's so great to give them a choice, you know? So I have it started in black and I'm making another black because I had all of this yarn in my stash. Now this is the Woolies Chunky, which has been discontinued, but Woolies replaced it with Hue and Me, like H-U-E, Hue and Me. And um, oh yeah, thanks for all the Invisalign love too. Yeah, I really appreciate all of the encouragement you guys gave and 
a lot of people have been through it. A lot of people are going through it. So I'm just forging on and trying my hardest to wear them as long as possible every day. Uh, but anyhow, Hue and Me has a great array of colors. Also, it's the Woolies. And yeah, it's just this. These are, I swear you could have these finished in like, how long? Uh, four hours? I'm not kidding you. So you could get you could get a lot done. And I know that some of you knit for at least six hours a day. So you could have lots of savant hats, double brimmed hats made. So, okay, so I have one more of those to make, which will definitely be finished before Christmas. And I might not get together with my girlfriends till after Christmas anyhow. So that will be great. Okay, my other gift net is for my husband. All right, let's talk socks. <clears throat> I have made socks before for myself. I haven't made anyone else any socks except like some, like I've made kit, my kids socks. Uh, but, you know, not another foot that my kids didn't have to be perfect. I don't know, my husband, I just want them to fit him really well. So I have this yummy yarn that self stripes from my friend Maureen that she sent me, I don't know, five years ago, probably. Thank you so much, Maureen. I am loving this yarn so much. I think self-striping yarn is so great because, you know, it just, you don't have, it looks like you put a lot of effort into it <laughs> and you really didn't. You just kept knitting. So I'm getting ready to pick up, you know, the 17 stitches along here. Is that the gusset? Can't remember what that's called but I've done the heel flap and you can tell I don't knit many socks. Okay, I have knit myself socks before, but here's the problem. I don't really love to wear them because I feel every stitch on the bottom of my foot when I'm stepping and I'm walking. And I don't know, is that the nylon? Is there a yarn that, a different yarn I should be using maybe? Um, I, I don't know if anyone has any tips or maybe other people are that sensitive too, but I would love to know if there's a yarn out there that it's just, but yeah, so that, I don't know. That's why I don't wear socks or make many socks, but maybe he won't be as sensitive. And hopefully I can have this finished before Christmas. I did also follow some videos on YouTube uh, I will link them below. Her name is Roxanne. Anyhow, everything will be in my description box below. And she has some great how-tos. She had a, has a very, you know, measure of the foot. It's a very detailed sort of way to go. I measured my husband's foot. And then you take all the measurements of all the, you know, from the ankle, the ball of the foot, the cuff, the heel, and she has a formula on how to get to where you need to be for a perfect fit. So hopefully, I am trying to follow everything and hopefully these will fit Steve. We, we can only hope. And hopefully he'll have two socks on Christmas day and not just one. All right, so I have a amazing product to review with you before I talk about COVID. It's just going to be a quick little review. I am not getting anything for this review. The people at BenQ reached out and knew that, you know, this would be a great product for knitters to use. And they were right because I have loved it. I have a very hard time seeing black or dark colors at night. I usually try to save those projects for the summer and the bright light. Uh, my husband always giggles and says, you know, do we have to have, you know, are we performing surgery in here tonight? And so he likes it a little moodier to watch TV and I love it super bright all the time. Uh, so this has been super helpful and I love it. It's a very sleek, modern lamp uh, for your desk or anywhere, but I have been using it while I've been knitting on the couch, I love that the arm tilts up and down so, you know, I can really focus the light under 
on top of my hands. You just touch it to turn it on. It filters through all of the types of lights. So it goes from, you know, warm to cool. And then you can dim it on each uh, temperature. So it sort of gets every, I don't usually even use the blue light. But there's the blue light, you know, it's a very cool light. I like the bit of a warmer light, but over a desk, you know, you might like the cool light. Anyhow, I am loving it. And my husband is too, because we are both getting what we want at night. And I am, yeah, just able to see. And then, you know, I don't have to have it on all the time. I can, you know, flick it on. I like the array of lights it gives and it dims. So, and I can really focus the light where I want it to be. So I am not getting anything. I'm not affiliated with them at all. Like I said, yeah, I just wanted to share in case your eyes are struggling as well and you're looking for a solution to that very annoying problem. All right, so, okay, yeah, before I grab Libby, I wanted to just talk, I don't know why, you know, it's not more well known on what to do when you get sick. So my mom not only taught me everything in knitting, but she taught me everything, you know, that I do now for when you get a cold or a flu or which I, we haven't dealt with for a long time or COVID. Uh, so my mom always had her sort of, you know, things that she learned along the way that were so helpful. And I'm not sure why, but it's really not, these things really aren't talked about a lot. If you get COVID, you know, what to do at home to just take care of yourself. So her number one thing is drink a lot of water. You wanna drink so much water that your urine is just clear. That's it. You cannot have any tint at all. If you do, just keep drinking more water. So every hour drink water. Just, just make sure you are drinking water. Stay extremely hydrated. Uh, her second thing was, which nobody says doctor. We called her doctor. None of these were like even adjust. Change your toothbrush. It's so easy. Change your toothbrush. My mom used to, I changed it every two days and had my husband change his every two days and uh, my son, but my son probably didn't even do it. But I keep a lot of really inexpensive toothbrushes around just for that. So change your toothbrush and do a rinse with Listerine or whatever. I used Thieves, Young Living Thieves essential oil, mouthwash, and, but whatever you have, that's great. Just rinse and change your toothbrush uh, at least every two days. The other thing was don't swallow your mucus. No, spit out your mucus. Whenever you get any out, spit it out. Just go to the bathroom, spit it out. Uh, get a tissue, whatever you need to do. But you don't want that running through your body. People never tell people that. You know, it, and it's, it, it's very, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, the other thing is, is, you know, eat really well because you already have all these toxins in your body and you want to get rid of them. You don't want to add more toxins to your body. So just eat as clean as you can. Fruits, vegetables, you know, broths, lots of liquids. Um, try to eliminate any inflammatory foods, eliminate dairy, processed foods, things like that. The other thing, of course, is rest. Just, you know, thankfully we're all knitters and we like to rest. We can rest. Uh, so there are those people that can't, like my husband. He, he didn't really want to rest ever. Uh, he was actually hanging Christmas lights out in the house. Mm -hmm. But I was great resting. <laughs> um, let me think. The other one and final one is thank your body for healing because it's doing a great job. So just always constantly thank your body for healing and taking care of you and working so hard for you. And yeah, those are pretty much my mom's nursing tips for everything you can get, the cold, the flu. 
and so good. Uh, the things I did take, the supplements I want to share, these are, I think, pretty much online, um, were I took zinc, I took 100 milligrams of zinc, and I took uh, 5,000 milligrams of D3, and I took three packages of the emergencies, you know, the powder and just a little shot, you know, just a small amount of water. Uh, I did those three times a day. So it's C, zinc, and D3. Anyhow, I hope everyone stays, you know, safe and healthy. And if you happen to get COVID and have very mild symptoms, I am so wishing that for you and that you remember those little tips. All right, I am gonna go grab Libby and have her put on her sweater. I am also, I think, gonna do this little wardrobe change right now because I have this Christmas sweater that I made, I think it was back in 96. And uh, yeah, I just thought it would be fun to put on. I showed it to my friends Nadine and Christy yesterday. and. Yeah, they, they thought it was kind of cute. So I'm going to go put it on for you guys. All right, I'll be back. I am back with my girl, Libby. Hello. <laughs> and Libby is 24 and living in Denver as a second grade school teacher. And I'm super grateful to have her home for Christmas mm -hmm. break. You're here until the first, right? Yes, till the first. Yes. So, and Libby knows how to knit. You were, how old were you started knitting? <laughs> um. I don't know. How old was I? Little. Remember Charlie was knitting at the pool with the girls? Yeah, maybe like first grade, second grade. Maybe. Yes. Somewhere around that age. And I taught Libby and the boys, her brothers, how to knit. And yeah, so everyone at least knows how to knit. And Libby got into knitting last year, uh, right, at this time, mm -hmm. and made... One sweater and ordered yarn, was very aggressively <laughs> ordering yarn for lots of... <laughs> I, lot. I was going to make every single one of my friends so better. <laughs> now that getting going? a little ambitious. <laughs> How's that going? Still in the process, very much so. But you are working on one. Yes, I do have one sweater. Well, kind of working on it. You don't, you can finish this in no time. Yes, it's a little oh, yeah. cropped. What's the name? Um, the patterns in here. It is the Trefan. Trefan. Trefan sweater. Yeah. And yeah, I do have to do the sleeves still, <laughs> but it's, it's a little crop. It'll be cropped, so it'll be good with high waisted bottoms. Of some so kind. cute. Do you have layered? That, can you pull up that unravel? Sure. Because um, I don't, we didn't print the picture. Because I think okay. the picture is really big. And we, let's see, we didn't print that to waste all the ink. But the yarn actually feels really soft. It's made out of uh, a super bark, bulky wool. And Libby's using wool in the gang. I mean, not wool in the gang. <laughs> She's using, you have a ball? Oh, yeah. So this is, should I show it to you? Yeah. This is the sweater. It has a couple it's cute. cool it's... details and yeah, the sleeves are kind of a little um, cropped. Mm -hmm. Three quarter sleeves. Yeah, trying to, this is a good picture of it. Yeah, that's cute. There you go. So, and literally, this is the Thick and Quick by Woolies. So machine washable and dryable for her friends. Mm -hmm. They can just not have to really care about it. And um, and this was the same yarn I used, right? For the oh yeah monsoony sweater that I made. She made the monsoony made last pink. year in about three days. Yes. She was absolutely addicted. So ambitious about making one for every single one of my friends. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, maybe who's going to get this one? Um, I don't know. I think I originally was making this one for myself, but it could definitely be a friend sweater. We'll yeah. see. No, you don't really have those sleeves, will take you like you could finish this in a day. Yeah, I definitely could. For sure. 
looks yeah. great. I love it. Me too. It's going to be cozy. It is cozy. The yarn yeah. is so squishy. I love this yarn for that purpose. It would be purpose. cute with a little um, a layer underneath Ooh, it. Oh, yeah. Even, even a turtleneck. turtleneck. And then something longer hanging mm -hmm. out. Yeah. Yes. Very so cute, then. sweetie. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> so, and yes, here. so here's the Wool in the Gang sweater that Libby wanted. Yes, I requested this sweater to be made. Well, she wanted a red sweater. For Christmas. Yes. Yeah. Here it is. And I don't know if I mentioned that this was Lipstick Red by Wool in the Gang in their Take Care Mohair. And it's literally a front and a back and two sleeves. And then you just seam it all together with this little, I like that. It's mm -hmm. not. It's like a slouchy turtleneck. Like a mock neck. Yes. Cheap, I don't know mock. if that's the term. I think that's great. Okay. <laughs> and I am wearing something that is very old and I pulled it out. And like I said, I showed my friend Nadine and Christine yesterday on a Zoom call and they were like, I think it's really cute. <laughs> and I'm like, it is kind of cute, right? So I made this in 1996 when Charlie was a baby. And here's the picture. I found the pattern. Like I always put yarn with my label band, my ball bands, and put it in the sleeve with the pattern. And then I put it in a notebook. So it was really easy to find. Um, it's kind of scratchy. It is so scratchy. <laughs> it's very thick. It's a, um, they call it the classic wool by Bally, Bally Bray. I don't even know if they're still in business, but it's 100% pure wool. It was out of a Vogue knitting. It was number 13 out of one of the Vogue knittings, which was winter of 96, 97. And yeah, it's my only Christmas sweater I ever made. <laughs> I, I love it actually. <laughs> and I think I'm gonna wear it this year. On Christmas? Maybe. Maybe Fine. I should wear it on Christmas. <laughs> Libby, I actually do like style. the um, the colors, the off white Me too, and the mm -hmm. greens and the greens. And I loved this little detail they had you cast on. It, don't you like that? Yeah, I do. So they had you cast on with the other color, and then immediately switched to the new one. So it gave this little braided effect. I like that. Neat. Very yeah. fun. Do you want to borrow it? Maybe <laughs> I might. <laughs> You know it's not cute when you ask your daughter if they want to borrow something. They're like, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. <laughs> so anyhow, you guys, this is really fun. Oh, we brought um, some cookies over because when this was even before Libby was born, my mom and sister and I would knit in Jupiter, Florida. And the Publix there, it was the only Publix that made these Mexican wedding cookies. And then they, so we would get cookies you know, periodically it was our big treat and my sisters and mom and I would sit and knit and eat these amazing cookies and really then they so discontinued them. So mm. I, my sister and I <laughs> and my mom <laughs> begged the, uh, the baker at Publix for the recipe and she kept saying, I can't make it any smaller because it's this big, huge commercial amount. And so she whittled it down and came up with a recipe. And I will link that below too, but they are the best they really are. knitting cookies. And I have my Invisalign, you can take it by here. <laughs> I forgot to take oh, them out. Right. Hmm. It's actually so, so flaky too. And buttery. <laughs> Do you like it? Mm. Of course. <laughs> 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 so we'll delicious. leave those that below but yeah Libby and I just want to wish everyone a very Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays yes. to those who don't celebrate enjoy your holiday season and we hope that you have something really fun on your needles mm -hmm. and yes just enjoy the time okay bye everyone <laughs> nice nice joining in <laughs> nice meeting you <laughs> All right. And remember, you mm -hmm. always have a friend to knit with. And now you have two friends to True knit with. that. <laughs> All right. Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye.
which I love. Honey. Oh, my son Andrew just popped in. Hi, you want to come say hi? I'm going to go with the balls. Okay. Hi. <laughs> All right, sweetie. Here, let's put it here. Ah! 